Welcome back everyone to part two of our discussion on RAG, where we're going to inject the text as context for our query, and then we'll also show you how to expand this idea to some more real world documents like a PDF. Let's get started. Okay, here I am at the notebook where we left off last time. So far, what we've been able to build is the R or retrieval portion of RAG. I now have a function that can take in a query and then it can embed it as well as perform a similarity calculation. And then it's going to return to me the title and text of the document that is most similar. That's perfect, that's exactly what I need. So this is the R, now we just need to do the AG, augmented generation. So what I'm gonna do is create basically one final function. I'll go ahead and just call it rag, you can call it whatever you want. And then it takes in the text query and there's a couple steps of what we need to do. We need to perform the actual retrieval of the most similar document. That's basically just calling our most similar document call. Then I need to perform the actually augmented generation part, which means I need to call and create my model. And then I need to augment the actual query. So I need to somehow, you know, using new lines and a little bit of prompt engineering, say, hey, here's some context and then inject the text. And what would be really great is if I could also add in some sourcing for my own benefit. Basically just put in the title so I understand what actual document was used. So what's the retrieval of the document? Luckily for us, that's easy. We just spent all that time building out that functionality. That's just a call to most similar document. And I'll zoom in one here so you can see it a little better. So that's just our most similar document. Remember that one can just take in the query and return the title and text of the most similar document. Then to perform the generation, I need the generative model. So we'll say model is equal to gen AI, and then we'll call generative model. And then I'm gonna pass in Gemini Pro here. So that's the generative model, Gemini Pro, and then I need to actually do a little bit of prompt engineering. So how is this gonna work? I'll do the following, I'll do an F string literal, and then I'll say, answer this query. And then I'm going to put a new line and inject the original user query. Remember the original user query here, that's just the text string. That's the text string that says something like, any news about the San Francisco 49ers today. So far, we were able to grab the most similar document, but we're not technically answering the question. So what I need to do is answer this query, and then I'll put a period there, do a new line, and say only use this context to answer, colon, I'll do a new line, and then insert the text. Remember the text here is what I retrieved. And then what I'm going to return is the response from the model. So we'll say model dot generate content. And then I'm gonna pass in that prompt. And then I'm going to return the response text. But what I also wanna do is actually tell the uh, basically user what title of the document that I use. So we'll do the following. I'll do another F string literal here. I'm gonna insert the response text and then we'll maybe add in a couple of new lines and say source doc title and then we'll insert that title. Okay, so I'm retrieving the document. I'm creating the model. I'm doing a little bit of prompt engineering saying answer this query, the original query, and then telling it, hey, use this context to answer. I'll generate the response and then say source doc title. So I'm not going to get the exact text output here. So let's try it out. So let's ask it a question maybe about the Super Bowl. So we'll say print rag, and we'll say, um, do you know, let's say who is going, or let's say just even more general. Do you have any information about the upcoming Super Bowl question mark? I'll go ahead and print that out. And so it says, yes, the San Francisco 49ers are heading to the Super Bowl. And I have this nice little source doc title that it used the sports section to answer that question. And note here that the response it gives me, that is not the actual text from the document. So if I scroll up, remember the actual text from the document is this line, San Francisco 49ers are heading to the Super Bowl in a football showdown. Here, it's just answering, but it's using the context of that document. That's the difference between just you know retrieving a relevant document versus using it for the query. So I can say something like, do you have any information about the, and let's say now the 49ers. 
49ers. Run that, and notice that this is where context is important and how you do your prompt engineering is important. So it says, yes, the context confirms that the San Francisco 49ers football team that is advanced to Super Bowl, significant event in American football. Remember, I prompted engineer to only use this context to answer. Maybe I could have said something like, uh, use this context, but give me any extra info that you may be aware of. You want to be able to essentially kind of uh, play around with this prompt engineering for your specific use case, depending on what you're trying to achieve with basically the assistant that you're building via RAG. Okay, so that is the entire RAG process. So again, if we take a look actually at the lecture notebook, we've broken it down in steps for you. You're gonna use your original documents, load the embedding model, create the vector embeddings, then store the embeddings, then perform a similarity search, which then finally allows you to perform full RAG, inject the text as context using RAG. Now I have a little other cell here where it is the expansion to more real world documents. We were just using things like text strings, but in reality, you're gonna need to do this on documents that are not just Python text strings. So the whole idea behind this approach is, are you able to get any document and then put it in as a text string? And I wanna be clear, it really depends on your situation, what libraries make sense to you. And there's also a ton of paid services for things like uh, optical character recognition and other libraries like unstructured.io that you can check out that can use many different uh, methods to read in many different document types like PowerPoints or Word docs, etc. But I just wanted to show you a simple example. We won't you know, write all the code here, instead I'll just explain it. So here, what I'm doing is I'm using PyPDF2 to read in a PDF. And this PDF is this uh, Wonka chocolate facility rules, which is just a facility safety rules document asking about you know, uh, what equipment you should have inside of the Willy Wonka factory, basically totally made up here. And then I initialize an empty data frame, and then I'm looping through each file, checking that it's a PDF, and then I can open the PDF file, read it in, initialize the text variable, and then for all the pages, I'm performing the extract text method. And then I also had to do a little bit of addition here where for whatever reason, this PDF had a lot of new lines, so I replaced them in with just empty white space. Then I created a new data frame, concatenated it, and then eventually you get this result here of the title and then the corresponding text for that data frame. And I can you know, copy paste this into our untitled notebook just to confirm that it runs. So scroll all the way down here. I'll go ahead and run that. And then we'll check our data frame. We can print the DF text of this data frame. And remember we could have just done this in a loop for multiple documents. And let's actually get the full text, dot .iloc0. And there it is. So now I have a Python string of what was inside this PDF here. Super useful to have as something in your toolkit. Now you may be wondering, well, what do I do if it's not a PDF file? Maybe I have a bunch of PowerPoints and I need to extract that text. Well, remember, you have one of the world's most powerful AI models to help you out. You can either just connect via Python and ask it for some Python code to help you out, or you can even do it through something like Bard. So for example, let's imagine we were working with PowerPoints. All you could do is just come to Bard and say, um, please write a Python script that iterates through a directory and extracts the text of all the PPTX PowerPoint files in that directory. Remember, you should be using AI as a tool, both to create new pieces of information as well as new tools like performing RAG or just performing text generation, but you can use it to build the tools themselves. So now, just using Bard and a little bit of Gemini Magic, I have this Python code that I can then easily copy and paste and insert. So again, for this sort of thing, definitely take advantage of the fact that you have access to this Gemini AI model. You could do that via Python or just kind of mess around with Bard, copy and paste this to you know, your code and whatever makes sense. You can add in PDF files, et cetera. And notice here, it informs you that there's this Python PPTX library or PPTX that you can use just after you install it. You can always ask more questions with Bard. So you can say, what is this PPTX uh, Python library? how to install it, question mark. And, oh, it actually gave me information, I think, right here. 
um, right here, yeah, PPTX. So import the necessary libraries and it gives me more information, etc. Perfect. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the course. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it useful. Thanks.